Hello there. This is a Lionel KW Transformer. This is one of the most wonderful transformers that Lionel ever made. It's, they started making them in 1950 for about 15 years until 1965. They were rated for 190 watts of output, but they really, their usage really maxed out around 140, and they were capable of consuming about 10 amps uh, of current. So uh, this is a, a powerhouse. It has two controls for independently running two different loops of trains independently. Uh, th there's the reversing buttons here for each train to, uh, interrupt the uh, the current so that the E units on the locomotives would react. This light is not an on and off light. This is the short circuit, uh, the circuit breaker light that shows that you've got a short uh, when that thing lights up. So you don't want to see this thing light up. There should be a uh, an orange red uh, knob there for the whistle. The whistle for the two separate loops does not operate simultaneously. For example, you can't do both trains at the same time. You can only do one after the other. But that didn't seem to be too much of a problem. Here we can see that the, uh, the A and the B uh, controls are pretty messed up and uh, the uh, Glue was attempted at some point in time, but they've broken off inside and they're glued. So we're going to have to replace these handles. Uh, it's a shame because I, I hate to lose the, the nice old medallion, but we'll have to stick a new medallion on. Actually, getting these things apart is not that problematical. There are four Phillips head screws here and here. You take them off. Of course, you take off the, uh, the handle that would be here and then you pry off these things. Now what I usually like to do is to find a coffee cup or something that will contain all my parts. I've got a little reservoir here and I use this plastic cutting board as a work surface so that I don't screw up my table too badly. These things have been in here a long time. This is the first time we're taking it out and uh, uh, also notice here that we've got the original Lionel cord on it. The cord is gummy, and uh, I'm not. I tried to get a current on it, but I didn't get any reading on current with a voltimeter. So that's we're going to have to replace the cord. Always, always, always before you start working on anything, make sure that the cord is unplugged. Repeat after me. Make sure the cord is unplugged. Very good. Well done. And when in doubt, replace the cord. Now, for the KWs, replacing the cord is a major thing to do, and it's a real pain in the neck to do, but absolutely essential. So we're going to have to just grin and bear it and do it, and you, once you know how to do it, you'll just take your time and get it done. Now, to uh, avoid breaking all the handles, well, these we're going to replace, so I don't care that much if I break them or not, but I usually pr use two different screwdrivers at different places to try to gently pry up a bit. And then once I get it, there we go, and then it just pops off, and then this, the metal spacer, and then this comes off too. So we're going to wind up with, with a a went over here and then the B went over here and then this just lifts off. Voila! All right, what we're going to do, we're going to take off, this just unscrews, and we're going to put a nice new uh, jewel on there. So let's put that aside for now. I'm going to clean up the case and we're going to take care of business thereafter. All right, let's take off the, uh, the lamp. Here we go. There. Now you need to have a place to put all this stuff. It's, and it's there's no two ways about it. Once once you do lose one thing, you're really up the creek without a paddle. So 
These are the, uh, the, the push buttons to reverse direction. They've got springs that come out from them, so I like to keep them together. And then you have the push button rod and the washer. Here's the two push button rods, one, two, and the two washers. And now you have a good idea of what you're dealing with here. Well, the, uh, these four bracket posts are what keep the, the operating platform together. And if we're going to work on this thing on the inside, it's going to take an awful lot of effort. I generally like to just disassemble the, uh, the, the entire, all the, take off all the wires and take this completely off and then work on it for the simple reason that uh, you can't get at the machine adequately. For example, the power cord is all the way down here and underneath, and you just can't get to it. It's impossible to get to that without, you know, good luck. So one trick of the trade is to take a photograph with your cell, your cell phone of the wiring arrangements so that you know where to put things when it's time to put them back. Look here, this has got this bracket strap in here. So this must be a newer model because they didn't have bracket straps originally. And uh, they changed the model a little bit in 1957. Okay, here's video two. I worked on this a little bit. This unit was made from either from, from 1957 to 1965 because it has these bracket straps. The core was laminated in 1957 and uh, to try to reduce the humming in the machine and the vibrations. And uh, so th it wound up with a slightly different size uh, bracketing and these straps were needed to hold things in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off the, uh, the, the operating platform. That means we have to turn these tabs away to make that happen. And then we're going to separate all the wiring from the platform. And then when that's done, then we will do our work as required and see what needs to be done and then put things back together. Now, it would make a whole lot of sense to take photos with your cell phone of the different wiring arrangements. What's happening with the, uh, the back plate and the wiring back here? Where do the wires go? And where do the wires wind up? And you can't really tell that. So what we're going to do here, we're going to do several things. We're going to take off all the wiring and then we're going to resolder them so that there's no cold solders connections there. Then uh, we're going to replace the power cord with a new power cord. We are going to replace the rectifier disc right there. So you can see the rectifier resistance wire here. And uh, ordinarily, I would use a, a stud diode like I do in the 1033s, but the case, the Bakelite case, does not have the tolerance to put in the, uh, the new stud diode. So the, the newer uh, rectifier discs are pretty darn good, and the simplest thing to do here, which gives you a good result, is simply to take off the speed nut, put in a new, uh, more modern rectifier disc, and put the speed nut back on, and then you're back in business with your whistle. Now, some people like using drum diodes there. I'm not a fan of that so much because the rectifier plate here is difficult to solder on, and you can have a bit of a mess, and it's a pain. And I, you might get slightly better performance with the diode, but I think that with the, the more modern rectifier discs, that you, the aftermarket discs are pretty darn good, and they give you a good result. And so this seems to make more common sense to do that. This is the circuit breaker, and it looks, it looks fine. And I don't see any reason right now to replace that. 
There's only two wires to it. There's the rectangular wire that goes back into the core, and this one goes all the way back, I believe, to uh, the C post, if I'm not mistaken. But we'll we'll figure that out later on. We'll, we'll do the wiring diagram later. So let's take off all the wires and expose things. Now you'll also notice that underneath here, let me see if I can get, get us a good uh, view. Under in here you'll see that there are the rollers, the, the graphite rollers that go up against the core and they are pretty worn down so we are going to replace the rollers too which is another great reason for completely removing the top. And then once the top is off, we're going to take out the core, put in a new plug, and then uh, put the core back in, which is another troublesome pain in the, in the neck to do. But the return is, is worth it. So that's it for number two. I'll come back to you once I've liberated the or operating platform from all of its wiring. Okay, here's the beginning of video number three. The first order of business is going to be to replace the power cord, which comes through this slot in the back plate. You'll notice that the old cord still has a knot in it, and then that is secured into the core. And the core is very problematic to get in and out. So it's going to take some doing. Here's the, uh, the platform, the operating platform, and you can see here the rollers now. Uh, that are fairly worn down, so we're going to replace those rollers. It'll be a lot easier to do it with the platform removed. The circuit breaker looks to be in pretty darn good shape. Uh, I would like to replace it in order to show you how to do it, but it really is just a, a two-wire thing, so perhaps uh, we can do that another time, but right now the, uh, the circuit breaker looks fine. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay, so let's put the operating platform aside for the moment and let's bring our attention to bear on the laminated core here and uh, putting a new uh, power cord in. Now, first things first is get rid of the old power cord which should not be a terribly difficult thing to do. We'll just take some wire, some clippers here, get rid of the old cord, pull this out. Okay, now we're gonna have to unsolder all of this from the, uh, the core. And to do that, we have to get the core out. And this is a cantankerous, annoying job to do, folks, if you don't know it already. And, for example, we're going to have to move these brackets out in order to get it up. Let's get these out of the way. That's kind of good. Don't want to do it too much to get metal fatigue, then you really have problems. But the thing is not going to slide up with these things in the way. So let's bend them back a little bit. They've been bent in on purpose, which is less than great. Get them out of the way. And let's, let's see if that's enough. I don't want to do more than I have to do. There we go. All right. So this allows me to clean this up. So here we go. Right here you can see where the, uh, the power cord goes in, and there's a knot here. And that prevents the power cord from being pulled through the back plate and separating these two points from the, um, from the core. So what we're going to do is we're going to unsolder this, and then I have a new power cord that already has tinned points to it. And we're just going to slip those in. And it, it's not a complicated thing to do. But before that, I think what we'll do 
is we will slide these through the back plate here and pull that through a bit and then make our knot because once we have the knot in place then we're in business so and then it's only you know a couple of inches from the knot to the core so you can make a loose knot and then you can adjust it easily to the thing you distance you want that should be perfectly fine right there and then it doesn't have to be tight it just has to be there so that the power cord cannot be pulled out so let's take our soldering gun and remove this fella from here one thing I like to do when uh, replacing cords is I use a toothpick a wooden toothpick to open up the, the, the hole that the power cord goes th through. And yeah, here you go, you're almost through, you're almost coming. Almost there. Come on. You can do it. Come on. There we go. And then let's do the other one. Bend this guy down a bit. And do the same thing on him. I'll show you what I mean. All right, he's he's out as well. All right, here's the old remnant of the power cord, and that simply gets thrown out. Now, what I like to do is to take a toothpick and make sure that this aperture stays open. Let me get that out of the way. So you have to melt the solder, and you can see how the toothpick the solder can go ahead and dry, I don't care, but the toothpick keeps the opening there so that you can slide in the new power cord. And we'll do the same thing on this side. There we go. See? That just lets the solder solidify and then we can just Pull the wood out and we're in good shape there. Good. So now we take the, the new cord. It's not hard. Just bend these up at almost a, a right angle and thread them through. And then just bend them up. Here's one, one there, and here's two. There's two there. Now we could leave it like that, but we're just going to add a little solder. Just for the joy of life, and because uh, a day without solder is like a day without something, I suppose. Alrighty, let's get a little bit of flux on here. Here we go, looking good. Yes, yes. All right. So, that takes care of that. The power cord is now on. And we have the, the, uh, the, the knot in the cord. So when we put this back into the, uh, the base with the, the bracketing, everything sh it's very, very small tolerances in here and you really have to work hard to get that done. But I'm gonna clean this up with some CRC, maybe some Q-tips and stuff in there. And, and make it nice and clean before we put everything back together again. Alrighty, so let's take the core and put that aside for now. Now we have the circuit breaker, the rectifier disc for the whistle, and we have the, uh, the rollers for the current. This, is, this wire is for the, the lamp, the uh, circuit breaker lamp. We don't want to have that out of place, so let's keep him out of the way. Why don't we start with the the two rollers. The, the methodology that's best for the these graphite rollers is to get a good long nose pliers and put the cloth underneath it or something, a towel maybe, and crush the graphite so that it particularizes and comes out. Now your hands get all dirty as you can see. 
uh, and then you cut the pins. And once the pins and the graphite is out, then you have the new rollers and new pins that can go in, and then you just crimp the ends, and you're in business. So that, we'll do that in a second. Uh, and then for the rectifier, what we're going to do is we're going to take off the speed nut and put a new rectifier disc on, a newer rectifier disc that is a better performer than the originals. And then we'll see how we're doing. I think we're going to leave this uh, circuit breaker on, and I'll test it later on. And if it needs to be replaced, then I'll do a separate video on the circuit breaker. So let's get off camera now so I can go get my materials and supplies, and I'll be back to you with number four, I guess it is. Okay, it's the beginning of uh, number four. Here are the two new rollers and the two pins that are going to be replacing these fellas down here. Just wanted to give you a good close-up look of them so you understand. What we're going to do is we're going to put the pins through the brackets and then through the rollers and then crimp the end and that's all there is to it. So let me put these down and let's show you how to get rid of the old rollers. It, it, it's not particularly complicated and not particularly pretty either. But what you do, I have a piece of paper towel underneath, you just crush them. You crush them, and then when they fall off, they fall off. They're graphite like a pencil. So, let's get a little bit more on this fella. And then he should come all the way off so we can get at the pin. There we go. That's one. Then let's do the other one. There we go. That should be... Okay, that takes care of both old graphite pin, uh, rollers. So this, roll this up and get rid of all this debris. And now, what we have to do is get a small wire cutter that'll fit in there and clip these pins. Now these pins are rather sturdy, so they don't... There we go, that's one. So you do need a good solid wire cutters that's relatively new to get them out. Let's get this baby. Come on out. This fella doesn't want to come out, so let's use a toothpick to get him out. There we go. We're all set here. Okay, so now all we have to do is put this through. I can. I hope you can see. I hope my fingers are not in the way. We're going to put the roller in between here, and then the pin goes all the way through. And we hope that it will make a really nice connection there. So here's hoping that it's all done well. Uh, slide you in. Come on. You can do it. There you go. Almost. Almost through. That's preventing you from going all the way. You're not quite lined up to get all the way through. So, let's line you up again. See if we can fix that, because it has to go all the way in. There. That's coming out the other side. And then what you do is you just take your, your pliers and make the tiniest crimp at the end 
on whatever is coming through. And that should do it. Okay, that rollers, that's fine. It's not going anywhere. Then let's do the second one. We need the pin and we need the roller. And we want the, the open end of the pin to be accessible on the outside. So here we just go through here, go through the hole. And let's see if we can get that all the way through. We want that to be up and in, and there it goes. And once again, we just take the, the tip of the long nose pliers and just crimp it. And that's in. So now we have two brand new rollers that are going to last probably for, oh, another 60 years or so. I hope. Now, one thing that's important, when you use these things, these, these machines for accessories, you tend to leave the throttle on, this, on a, the same place for getting the right uh, juice into the accessories, and that tends to wear down the rollers. Make a habit of changing the, the throttle settings for accessories and for the trains so that the rollers are not always on the same spot on the coil and that the rollers will uh, wear evenly and they will last far longer if you do that. Okay, that takes care of the rollers. Not too hard, was it? Alrighty, now we're going to go off camera. I'm going to get a new rectifier disc for this and I'll show you how to replace the rectifier disc. Be back in a few.